there's a lot going on. But before we start into this, I'm going to read something here to everybody. This was what the USDA put out about the inspection area and what they wanted everybody to do. Any inappropriate behavior, including but not limited to touching of USDA staff, remember that, touching USDA staff, touching hair, ponytails, buttocks, hugging, are an in inappropriate comments by DQPs and any other person engaged in inappropriate behavior will be considered harassment of a federal employee and treated as a criminal act under the Horse Protection Act. So here's what I say to that. You want me to respect you, you got to respect me. And right now, a lot of things going on in the inspection area and not by the DQPs or not by the custodians of the horse is being done by the USDA. And one lady in particular is going above and beyond uh, to cause or create or intimidate or provoke someone to say something or do something. Yes. And I don't know if she's doing it on her own or if someone with USDA has told her to do it or if maybe her boss has told her. Maybe the Secretary of Agriculture has said, hey, they can't do nothing about it. Get them to make a move. Get them to say something to you. But when it comes to this, uh, put your hands on and things like this, uh, I would I would think that it, it if you want me to respect you, you ought to respect, respect me. me. That's right. So we're going to start with this. We're going to start with an inspection. So first of all, I'm going to show you the inspection of a saddlebred horse. Now this is the USDA's way of inspecting a saddlebred compared to how they will inspect us. Now, there's one of the ladies that causes a whole lot of problems yes, she does. in our industry. And here she is, they're inspecting another one. I mean, it's very obvious that the horse doesn't want you touching his feet. But those horses can show. Now I'm going to show you one, and I'm going to show you the way that a USDA official, VMO, acts towards a custodian of a horse in the ten Tennessee walking horse shows. Let's show that. Yeah, she's walking the cones. Horse moving good, walking good. The lady that's watching her sitting over there with a gray vest. She's already put one in timeout. And uh, when she gets ready to inspect this, and she's going to put another one over there. Now, see, she's already walked home. Now I want you to do this. Now watch. She's still not satisfied. So she tells her to do this. Close the gate, that's the class. See, that's, that's going up I beyond I know. Love. I mean, it just, that, that's, it's too much. That's her trying to upset the lady leading the horse. And see, she's got this guy now. She's putting him in timeout. So here we go. Now, you got three horses right there that she got tied up. Right, but if, I want you to, if you time her doing this, now that, that's the thing about it is, if you time her doing the inspection process, you will find that she really goes way overboard. It takes her more time to inspect this horse. Matter of fact, it's more than twice the time that another VMO inspects a horse. But watch what all goes on during it, and I mean, Here's the horse, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you she turned this horse down because it moved. 
You know, the so thing that gets saying. me, Jerry, is this. You watched the first video you put out there with the saddle bread horse. Right. I mean, that horse is obvious, moving his feet, snatching his feet. You can't even see this horse move his feet at all. No. Right here. So I don't understand. If, he, if To me, if, if that's not targeting or, or whatever, not. you know. Well, what, what, what this horse does. I mean, this, this horse is, is all over the young lady that is holding it there, and she pushes his head around. But now, the VMO, she's over there. She's still inspecting. Yeah. Still inspecting. Now, the USDA put out a video of how thorough they were and how fast they inspected horses which is a ball face lie. But you can see right there, she inspecting Rome. She got her hands in front of the horse, checking the front, and still squeezing in the back of that horse at the same time. At the same you time. Know, you now, now watch what she does. Now th this, is, this is what really gets me, is the way she does this. And, but she wants us to treat her with respect. Now she's inspecting. Keep watching because it's coming. But that horse is, it obviously doesn't care what she's doing. That's right. In no pain at all. Looks back there and says, what are you doing, lady? Now, she would even stop, wipes her hands off. But then what she is doing She's taking way too long to inspect a horse if all she's looking for is a violation. Yeah. Now, if she's trying to create one, it's going to be a little bit different. Plus the fact you can't see what she's doing, but people that was there know. Now, watch. She's going right up under the horse, and now she's getting in, in this lady's face because she stuck her head under the horse. Not. The, It'd be different if, if the horse had reached around and done something, which it didn't. She puts her head up under the horse. Yeah. And now she's chewing this lady out, and she's trying to tell her, I'm holding the horse the way you tell. Now, see, she, you see, see that? Okay. All right. Now, that's assault. That's assault. That's right. If, if it's assault for us to even look at them, it's assault for her to put her I hands on that, that horse. That's right. You are exactly now, right on that. she tried her best to intimidate her to get her to do something. And it's a crying shame that the USDA sends people into horse shows with this kind of attitude and this kind of mentality and then want us to treat them like they're somebody. Excuse me. It's about time show managers told the USDA that they could either inspect horses according to the HPA or they could go home. If we got to follow the law, they should have to follow the law too. And she doesn't do a very good job she of following do. the law. Matter of fact, she goes way beyond the law, even breaks the law. You know, sometimes, Jerry, and you know, and I don't want to put my foot in my mouth, but sometimes the people that do an inspection, you might need to do a background check on them. Well, that's true. Just see where, and see, where and they, see, and where see they, they are from. and what they are. But right now, they're not supposed to interfere with the flow of the show. But she's got two guys in timeout over there that's got to show their horse. That's right. They want you to bring the horse up three classes prior to the class you're going to show, which means that you got a time limit in there that you're going to have to get the horse ready. And they've got him standing over there in timeout so she can do her thing. And I'm gonna just tell you, I know exactly how that young lady that's holding that horse feel. Yeah. I have been there and done that. And I know it's a big feeling when that woman, the one that's doing the checking, she's, when she picks a horse, she got an agenda to turn a horse down. She does. If you look at the number of horses she inspects versus the number of horses she turns down, you're gonna see that the majority of them get to do what that and, young lady and, does. And you cannot tell me that every time she touches a horse, that it is out. And then they say that. Like that. Then they say that she's the best one. Yeah. 
They said that she was the best one she's out the, there. She's the best one out there checking out all them VMOs. She's the best one well, that's out there checking. We're going to see some more stuff that she did. Now, we saw her inspect, all right? Now we're going to see a veterinarian, which is, a, to me, the soul is, is perfect. Now, here he is. He, he's fixing to inspect the horse. Walk the cones. You're going to see a big difference in the way he inspects a horse and the way she does. Well, that's what you call experience and doing his job. And that's right. what he's and that's what he's doing his job. Yeah, but he, here's the big catch with this: he's doing his job and being honest in that's the way right. he inspects a horse. Why ain't he inspecting right now? I mean, how long has it been since you've seen Doctor Dassault at a horse show inspecting? It's been a while. It's been a while. That's right. Because he ain't stringent enough, or he's not crooked enough or he won't overdo what he's supposed to do. He will not find horses out that are not out. That's right. So we don't have no use for you. We have to put up a front and we have to prove that all these horses are bad, even if we have to create the, uh, that's the right. problem. Which, and to show you about the, uh, the difference, I'm gonna show you a video now that the USDA did. They did this one showing how thorough they are on inspecting horses. So let's watch that one. You recognize that lady? Yeah. Now th here's the way she's going to inspect this horse for the video. And for everybody that don't, you see where she's palpating? The way she's doing it? That's the way it's supposed to be done. However, this particular VMO is the one we caught in video her putting the tip of her thumb down into the pocket to cause the horses to move. The same lady. But now this is what they tell everybody. They want everybody to believe yes. that they do when they go to a show. And those of us who are there know it's a lie. Yeah, you're it's exactly a bald faced right. lie. Now, we got one other thing. If they can't find a problem with the horse, and they did this to you, yes, then they will create it. And if it's not an HP a violation, they really don't care. Their whole concept is to disrupt the show and see that you're not showing your horse causing problems with your customer and everybody else. So this particular filly, look at her feet. She didn't move, so they decide that that sc field scar right below her knee, that that's, we're gonna call it out because of that. And what was and it she said? When the DQP wouldn't do it far, she turned around and says, well, I'll write that horse up for inflammation. That's right. I mean, that's how corrupt our VMOs have gotten. And th this is video proof. I didn't make this stuff you, up. But the same thing, the same lady on all them violations, she's the same one that, that, that called all them horses out. Yeah. And said that the same horses, when she inspected on the, the saddlebreds, they can jump, jerk. They, they, I mean, it makes no difference. Go ahead and show. Go ahead and show. That's right. So yeah. I don't think a horse is a horse regardless. If no, you no. pick his feet up and you get a response and you think you're supposed to disqualify the horse, I don't care if it's a quarter horse, saddle bread, walking horse, you should do all of them the same. But you only going to pick a certain breed of horse to do it to? That's not right. Well, there's one thing I want to tell everybody. Be sure to video your inspections because if you don't, you have no proof, you have nothing, you're out there by yourself. But this video like this right here that shows how corrupt 
and how out of bounds the USDA is. There is a veterinarian's creed that pledge that they do, just like a doctor. Yeah. And to me, when these BMOs go out there and start creating problems, rather than being honest, they should be held to the same standards as they would be if they were in a clinic. Yeah. Now, you know, when I get ready for my horse to be shown, I have it inspected by an equine veterinarian to make sure. The, when that filly, when they turned it down, they took it to a clinic. Yes. Had it x-rayed, checked everything to verify that it was a field scar. Yeah. I don't see why the BMOs, since they take such pride in their ability, that if they pull something like this, they ought to be held to the same standards as I would hold a veterinarian that told me my horse was perfectly all right when it wasn't. Or if he said I had a major problem with my horse and needed all this treatment when I really didn't. In other words, I'm saying malpractice is malpractice and a damn lie is a damn lie. You are right about that. Period. You know, Jerry, and I don't understand this. People know that the USDA and the way that they act, especially certain ones, going to be overbearing and all that stuff. So you know a man going to bring a horse up there, a person going to bring a horse up there that's in his heart and his feeling that he's going to be able to get through. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I'm not talking for everybody. I'm talking for myself personally. A couple weeks ago, I took a horse up there to help support the council show. Yep. And I took a horse up there to inspection, and I have no doubt in my mind that this horse, this horse was, it was perfect. Mm. I go to the DQP, everything's fine. She didn't even see. It. There's another guy that's watching that said that pulls me over, and made me and, and and got her to come and check my horse. Mm. She picks the horse foot up and had it stretched out behind him, and all he did moved his shoulder up because he had pulled too far behind him. She never did push his feet or whatever. When she did push on his feet, he never did move. But she tells me that she turns me down because she got some reaction when she first picked his foot up. Now, if you put his, pick a horse's foot up and you got it stretched out and he's uncomfortable, he going to raise his foot, move his feet to well, get comfortable. Anybody is. That's right. But that's, that's what I'm saying. When people take their horses up there, they need to be videoed. You when exactly right. she takes right. that horse's foot, and pulls it way back behind her, or some of them get up and they'll pull that horse's foot out to the left or the, I mean, they do things to cause a problem, and then they want to point the finger at us like we're causing the problem. It's kind of like when they hired a retired FBI agent to investigate us, and then he says, well, I investigated, but they're not the problem. Your inspectors are the problem. Well, we don't need you no more, because that ain't what we want to hear. Well, my my thing is this: the DQP check every horse that goes in that ring. Fact. They pick and choose whatever horse they want to check. So to it. me, I, now, I, the VMO picks and chooses. You pick, yeah, VMO pick and choose the horses that they want to check. Yeah. So you know, you can't tell me that you got certain people that they want to check regardless on what horse they bring through there. Well, yes, yeah, that's the only reason they want the the entry forms, they can go down through there and they can say, well, we're going to do this one, we're going to get this one, we're going to get this one. And I'll look them, any of them in the eye and tell them that's what they're doing. They need to put them on a lie detector. Test. That's right. Let them, let them step there and lie. My thing is this, if you ever get them in court, how many of them are going to lie for the government? How many of them, how many of the guards, think about that, because the guards are with them. Yeah. The guards know what they do. How many of them are going to lie to protect somebody that's not being, that is really being illegal? Yeah. Now, I know that the walking horse industry, we have problems. I know that. But they want to, to accuse everybody of being guilty 
when it's not everybody, it's a hand-picked few. And I'm all for them getting the ones that are definitely guilty, but when they have to create the problem, that's not guilt, that's falsifying evidence. That's telling a lie. That's being unprofessional. There's your penal code. When you do it, every one of you that have done it needs to be charged. And I'd love to see you get the 20 years. It said, does not, it does say in prison, not more than 20. Yeah. If I could put them in there for more than 20, I'd put them in there for more than 20. Because what they're doing is trying to destroy a culture based on a lie and what they saw 50 years ago. They cannot find the horse today that the Horse Protection Act was written for. They can't. So what do they do? They create it. I've right. seen a horse that had a girt rub and it yeah. wasn't, and they, and they, this, turned they, they turned the horse down. Well, they had one that stepped on itself. They turned, they gave it a violation because evidently he intentionally stepped on himself. Yeah. Or the trainer intentionally made him step on himself. That's how out and deranged they have got. And they, they walk around like we know it all. And really and truly, evidently their ponytail smacked them upside the head one time too many or something because the, what they're doing is, is totally illegal and, and it, it's not right, no matter what they say. It's and not you know, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say all of them ain't the same way, but you got a, some of them, you got a few of them that go overboard. Well, you got two that really go overboard. You got another one that for a bit did, and then she got to where she could really see the facts. Yeah. And you have got some of the BMOs that have left because they will not stoop to the level that these others are stooping to. Yes. And DeSoe, I wa I've watched him inspect. He, he's honest, he's thorough, but right now he's not being able to inspect. So I'm, I'm wondering why he can't inspect. I remember they had a, a, a veterinarian come one year and after, this was when a friend of mine was Mitchell Butler, he was mm -hmm. over the DQPs. And uh, I asked him, I said, that guy right there is not a regular VMO. I said, he's a veterinarian, isn't he? He said, yep, I said he's an equine vet. I watched him inspect, man was great. Next day, he wasn't there no more. Yeah. Evidently, he didn't turn down enough horses. And that that is the thing that bothers me, is that you want someone to do something, but you want them to be illegal. Yeah. And they can't say it's not illegal, because I mean, just to, just watching them. And that's why they send that one woman all the time because she get more numbers than any of them that's out there. And I mean, and to me, I, that's just not right. Well, it's not right because she knows what she's going to do. People know that if she touches a horse, she's going to turn it down. I have not seen her pass one. Now, she may have. I may have slipped one by without me seeing. But when I get a chance to go watch her inspect, I watch her inspect and I video her a lot. And every time I have videoed her, I've seen her do things that were dishonest, unethical. And accusing people of doing something that she don't know that they done yeah. it or not. Well, what was it? She said you blistered the horse, horse with yeah. a field scar. Lady, we don't even blister horses. That, that shows how much she, she That's what I'm saying. God. So, I mean. So, but it, it, I don't know, I, I just, uh, I've reached the point in my life that if if I were a show manager, I would tell them when they get there, as long as you inspect by the Horse Pe Protection Act, you're free to do. But the first time you step out of line, I'm going to have you removed from the premises. Period. It it doesn't because you got to have guidelines. You got to have you got to you got to have honesty. You got to have ethical behavior.